All right, my friends, if I hit all the right buttons, we are live again for another episode of Talk Bar BI Fridays. You know, I'm kind of starting to love this. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, why haven't you? Just lets you know whenever I go live. So hit subscribe, click that bell icon to get all the notifications. And whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions. And today is going to be a fun special episode. And I have a few things to share with you before we start. But let me just say hello to everybody who's on. So folks, uh, I see the usual suspects. Guy Johnson is here. Sam is here. And so is Jen Nabel. We talked, uh, we had an after party last week where <laughs> we dropped off of YouTube, but we got a chance to speak afterwards. So that was great. Who else do I see? Uh, Bogard Botello. Hello, my friend. Where are you calling in from? Uh, I would guess Italy, but maybe it's in US somewhere or somewhere else. Manor is here, Rajiv says hello, and Zig Baird says hi, Kimberly Force is here <coughs> too. It's afternoon for her, it's all good. Um, yeah, awesome. Danley's on, Danley's of course part of the Learn Power BI family as well. Danley, you can dial in too, so of course uh, in your class you can you can dial in and, and uh, let's see, do we have, any, we don't have anybody on the phone uh, today, huh, did I forget to send a reminder? Hey, if you're in the class, you have the, you know, Talk Power BI special class to call in. If you want to, hanging out on YouTube is cool too. Who else is there? Lulin, uh, Lunescu, uh, Manuel, Manuel Fintes. I know you, right? Uh, sometimes I mix up names. Uh, Prashant, uh, Benmari is here. Uh, Shinobe says hello and his sign is V. V is in victory, so that's awesome. Donnie Diamond is here. Awesome, my friend. So, hey, I, I was, uh, Eric Halen says hello to, oh my gosh, I'm so glad to see you guys here. Hey, Poppin, uh, Poppin, where are you calling in from as well? I would love that. And let's start with this. And, well, so I was talking to my team the other day and, and I think they asked me and they said, so I, why do you, why do people like join you live? And I said, I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I hope they just like hanging out with me, but maybe their main purpose is the training or or just uh, you know kind of connecting with other other Excel folks. So let me know. I want to hear from you if you don't mind just typing it in. Just type in and tell me what do you get out of Talk Power BI? Why do you join? And as you are thinking about that, uh, what I'll say is there's one habit that I need to change on my side which is, so I've been doing this for a while and, and, and a lot of comments come in and you, you people say such nice things, but I realized one day is that I wasn't letting it, any of it sink in. And I don't know why I was doing it. I think it's one of those things, maybe it's a cultural thing, I don't know, where, where like you're not supposed to think too much of yourself. I was like, oh, my head is going to get too big and, and all of that stuff. So what I would do is when <laughs> okay cool when uh, when people would say something i would not let it go in i would just almost brush it off you know and well like, oh, okay yeah this is something nice and then i stopped myself like why am i doing it yeah so i'm not going to do that anymore if somebody sends me something nice i'm going to let it sink all in I'm going to feel that gratitude, that appreciation for them. And I'm going to repeat a line. Let's see if I can remember. I, I cooked up a line for me. It's like, I feel humbled and grateful to have this opportunity to help you. And I'll just repeat that again and again because that's exactly how I feel. Cool. So let's see uh, what you guys are saying. And some of you are wise. I have some wise cracks. So love that. Uh, 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 L Ludian is saying, I, I joined a look at the bow tie. Okay, wait, it's a little bit cricket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have a story in bow tie, my friend. Uh, Jen says, helpful and fun. Uh, Prashant says, I see, learn, and get inspired to do more. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Uh, guys saying these sessions are a good way to end the week. I also learned quite a bit. Okay, hold on. There's some feedback on the phone. Hey, hey, Man Manuel, oh, of course, that's how I knew you. you, you you're in my course. Awesome. So, uh, Manuel, go on mute if you can. Mm, there's a bit of an echo. Uh, all right, cool. Let's try that again, or if you lower the volume. Uh, perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, if you have any other thoughts around this, like w what do you get out of it, let me know. 
um yeah that's cool so um what else there, there was some other stuff so now i've gotten to know a lot of you and i really appreciate that so i'm trying out something new a talk power bi insiders club and <laughs> i've been doing this since 2017 beginning of 2017 and people ask me like so avi where do i get these notes and where do i get the files you create on here and I was like, yes, 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 I got to get that available to you. So all of that is inside there. But I really think of this as as something bigger than that, not just so. And you if you click on that, uh, well, you can't click on it. You know, maybe I'll I'll uh, I'll punch that in here. So we'll say uh, uh, talk power BI insiders club. Did that work? Oh shoot, it's not a link, hold on. Oh, it's still not, okay, I guess it's not gonna be a link in the chat window, so you can copy paste that. But the idea is to 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 have that, have access, but then uh, one thing that I added on there, you know what, let me just show you the, show you kind of the page. Talk, 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 there we go. So uh, you, you get this handsome mugshot, that's free. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get access to the notes, you get access to the files. And guys, we've been doing it for 2017. So you can go back and if you were watching an older video or just search for something like, have has Avi ever talked about, I don't know, dynamics, have I? Uh, dynamic, dynamic variables, cool, right? So, so you can do something like that and uh, you can go back and look at the notes, search through notes, connect with people. It's like, oh, currently you asked about the firewall error, something like that, or you can also have access to all of the files and we have quite a few there now. Uh, and so yeah, if you're watching an older video and you're like, oh, I want the file, <laughs> now you get everything. So this is just 2018 and there's quite a few in there. Cool, so you get that and uh, what else? And the call-in link, now as it says, you know, wait for me to kind of activate it. Uh, so yeah, so, and I have other ideas around it. One, one, one thing that I have is I would love to include this group, this Insiders Club, into selecting future topics. And actually, that's a great segue into my next point, which is here. Next week, we're trying something new. We're going to have a panel, and I'm super excited about it. Frankly, I'm a, I'm a little tired of hearing my own voice, you know? <laughs> so uh, so we, we're going to have a panel and we already have a guest chosen from the community. So Kirill Perian, yeah, just he comes from the community, awesome fella, and he just responded to one of the emails that I sent out, kind of the weekly emails. And I think I was talking about Agile BI, and he said, Avi, that's I'm really interested in that. I'm like, cool, let's get you and a few other folks and let's go on, get on there. So so we might engage this club into kind of selecting topics and picking from them to to kind of all these panels and I have no idea how it's going to go. We'll see. And talking about hearing more voices than just me, I want you to meet Steve Ross. Steve, go ahead and say hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, yeah. Avi asked me to participate on this call to sort of keep an eye on the on the chat, the chat room. And uh, if, if yeah, so, 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 so yeah, so none of the uh, so things don't go unnoticed. That that's true. So sometimes I get excited, I get carried away. <laughs> you know, you get me started talking about data modeling or something like that. I'm, I might just talk for thirty minutes. So Steve is gonna keep me in line. Of course, the whole idea for the here is to be live with you. Otherwise, I can just record the stuff and put it up, right? So I want to hear from you. And since we're not in the same room, I can't quite kind of see you. If you're in the room, if you raise your hand, I would see you. Uh, so here, <laughs> Steve is going to help with that, but uh, but I'm I'm hoping a lot more. As I said, I kind of get tired of uh, hearing just my own voice. Maybe you do too. So yeah. So Steve, I always love mentioning thinking. Every time he, he brings up, I'm talking to him. So he works at a horse uh, horse racing racetrack, Ritama Race Park. And Steve, you, you so your outfit manages three race tracks, but it's expanding, right? Pretty soon, it's going to be like 18 or something. Uh, yeah, it'll be probably 14 and right. by mid October. That's great. Yeah. So, so guys, I mean, yeah, and, and, and if you've been on these calls before, uh, Steve is always very generous, gracious, very organized. 
if he has a question, he brings up the data set. So we have sliced and diced through some of the data sets uh, that Steve has had. So, you know, he's, he's kind, of, kind of contributed in that way as well. And of course, he's part of the Learn Power BI community. All right, cool. Um, uh, Manuel, it seems like has something to share. I'm glad I saw the comment. I don't often see. So Manuel, go ahead uh, and 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 uh, share share what you want to share. So you are based in Chicago, and I'm not sure if you want to mention the name of your company. <laughs> it depends on what announcement you have. Let's see. Uh, so Ma Ma Manuel, it's saying you're self-muted on your side. And Alan, hello to you as well, my friend. I would want to hear from you. See if you can unmute yourself. Okay, Manuel has a question as well. Question and when? All right. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. How are you doing, my friend? How is Chicago? How is the weather there? Uh, getting cold, but not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, same here. <laughs> you know, taking, taking your course and being committed to this, we have a we have actually two great success stories to share. Number one, um, as you can imagine, uh, commodities with the um, with the Trump trade war, um, commodities are going, uh, you know, uh, through the roof. So uh, we basically uh -huh. have to pass on some of it to our customers. Now, obviously, our our salespeople they were very worried. You know, what does this mean to me, and what does this mm. mean to my fifty customers, and so on. Yeah. So we created a dashboard. Yeah. To show exactly what the Sorry, not a dashboard. It's a report. Yeah, we published it, and the sellers now, since I guess Friday, I don't know, since a few days, have access to it, and they can exactly choose their customer and exactly explain. Okay, that percentage increase for for that product yeah. category means that, and it's it's just so cool. Oh my gosh, yeah, and and you go from this land of kind of confusion where people are like, oh yeah, I don't know, I don't know how, yeah, my customers are worried, I'm worried, to just saying, hey, yeah, here you go, here's all the information you need, go ahead and share the relevant information with specific customers. It, it just... Yeah, you can export yeah. it into a PowerPoint and then you can yeah. share with the customer. And if yeah. you want a usage report or a price sheet or whatever, we exactly. have that info for you. Just print it out or, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever you want to do. Love it, so, love it. So, so it's um, it's not only a report that we have, but secondly, it's also the rollout, and and, yeah. and I hope the sellers will be all over this. Nice, nice. That's terrific. That's great. And you said you had you had two. You had a pair. <laughs> Is there something else you want to talk about? No, I mean, the first was the uh, the first was this report, and then the second is, you know, due to this report, I mean, just imagine uh, yeah. doing this in Excel um, with our, you yeah. know, I mean, uh, anyways, it's good. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, and, that's and, and the Love second it. is basically the rollout, you know, because now it's self-service. Oh, um, I, can, I, can, I, yes. can I ask one very basic question? This is about a... Uh, ho hold on a second. I, I, I want to, you know, when I said that, I'm going to take kind of compliments and let it sink in. I want to sit in this space as well. So, folks, um, we do this inner entrepreneurs group and I learned there and I struggled with it. So inner group, you say, oh, guys, share your wins, share your wins. And I'm like, that's so narcissistic. Yeah, these people must love themselves. And, and it is not about that. If you approach it that way, sure, that's what it's going to be for you. But I saw that if you if you do it in the right spirit and you receive it in the right spirit, it becomes this amazing strength where, right? So for one, if you see somebody else do it, uh, I was a victim of that. I would be like, oh, yeah, good for them. I mean, oh, gosh. I, mean, I would feel kind of that <laughs> jealous, frankly, right? But if you just switch that and, and see, always see it as what is possible, what is possible. I was like, oh, Man Manuel has shown us what is possible. I know I'm kind of struggling with figuring out my first report and I'm concerned about the rollout, how will I can as a stakeholder, but Man Manuel has showed us how. So see it that way. And when you share it, share it with the same spirit that, hey, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody else. So uh, he, he didn't quite say it that way. But by the way, this, I think, is a winning strategy for rollout of Power BI, where you have built kind of this flagship report. I've often worked that way, where 
you know, kind of build something and I call it the, the, the shining beacon, you know, build that shining beacon and you can build that in two days. And, you know, certainly if you get some help, uh, with somebody who knows kind of what they're doing, that sort of stuff. And yeah, so build that shining beacon and they shall come my friend. So that is really awesome. Uh, Steve, anything interesting on the chat box while I was prattling on? Yeah. Um, it looks like Manuel was interested in uh, a question about matrices. Okay. And right. then it, we had another, uh, if you had any comments on Ignite. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Ignite, yeah, that's that's a good one. Let me park that one. So um, and also has a question and uh, Ignite. So let's do this. So Jen Naval, by the way, is Chicago as well. So Jen, Manuel, uh, I'm not sure if I've reached out to both of you. Hopefully I have, but I'm in Chicago in November and I'm, I'm just going to hang out in a coffee shop one evening. And, you know, so if you haven't gotten that, you should. You you would be getting soon anyway for me. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Ignite, 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 I don't know how to say it. Um, I have no updates. I've been off the grid a little bit. There's something really exciting going on in my class, and maybe I'll share that too. So if uh, any of you have any updates, you know, just by all means, share. Would love that. Uh Okay, cool. So, uh, Manuel, go ahead and ask your question, but we might bark it because I had promised, unless it's like really straightforward, because I had promised that I would kick it off with um, accumulative sum. Yes. So, uh, go ahead, go ahead and ask it. What, what's your question? What do you have? What do you have about matrix? We got you on the phone. Mm, okay. When, oh. Manuel tunes in. Mm. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, so in the matrix as a pivot table, if you, you know, let's let's think about product, product description, uh, you know, some some product attributes or whatever. Yep. Um, and then you have the years on top, two thousand yeah. sixteen, seventeen, two thousand eighteen, and the columns. Yes. Um. You can you can use a I think it's called a tabular view um, and um, hmm. so I would love to see item item description item attributes whatever that is um, in in the rows basically all all at the same time instead of having to drill down in Power BI. All right, now that's a fun one, but I I will save it. I was saving it, bring it because it's it's good. It's it's meaty. So thanks for asking that. All right, great. So uh, love it. So Jen apparently has reached out to Manuel. So great guy. So I'm. Uh, if you have heard me talk about my vision, I had drawn this on a piece of paper, and there's a picture of that somewhere because I took it. And what I drew was I drew these these uh, these stick figures, and I draw people all around, and and I connected them and. Uh, well, I was supposed to be kind of in the middle and something like that. And that's been my vision to form that community. I mean, I, I draw so much inspiration from the people I come across. Of course, I get a deeper interaction with them in the class. I get to hear the stories. But even if you're following me on YouTube, I, I get in touch with some of you. So, um, yeah, I'm glad for that. All right, cool. So, um, 20 minutes in but hey that stuff was was important so let's talk about cumulative sum especially especially when they break down i'm really interested in that part when they stop working so cumulative sum is uh is kind of easy right so here i have uh let's just do months actually let's take out quarter so my famous adventure works and let's do cumulative year to date by the way, you've probably heard me talk about it. When I build things, I have this concept of, I call it a working pivot, and you don't have to call it pivot. I, I started off in Excel, pivot tables, power pivot, so I just call it a pivot. It's a table really now, table visual. So working pivot, and then there's a reporting uh, pivot, and, uh, and then there is a debug pivot. So I, I use these three things. When I'm working on a measure, I'm using a, a working pivot, and that has no connection with the reporting pivot. It might be visualized in a final report in a totally different manner. 
And then when I get in trouble, that's when I use the debug pivot and, and they're all slightly different. So this is a working pivot. I wouldn't show my data this way. It would not make any sense, you know, but here it just helps me see kind of what's going on. And I heard Matt Allington, he uses a, a matrix. That's fine. I kind of use lists. I think that's simple. So here we have, and I just want to do a cumulative total over here. So let's just do cumulative. Uh, let's go over here and I'm going to say new measure. And we go uh, sales cumulative year to day equals and I say calculate. So calculate is the magic wand. It's it's pretty much the only function. There are one or two other ones which let you alter the filter context. All right. And we can talk about filter context if you guys want. And so calculate magic wand lets you out calculate the, uh, alter the filter context. So what I'm going to say is uh, sales so calculate sales yes but but with what well i want the year to date and and you could do it the hard way where but or you can do the easy way because there's tons and tons of sorry i'm kind of in the way here i'll, I'll move myself date dates uh year to date there you go and there are three functions here we'll talk about that and and pretty much all time intelligence functions. I shouldn't say pretty much. All time intelligence functions. The first parameter is always a calendar table. That's why a calendar table, I say, is, is really important. I have not built uh, a calendar table. Uh, sorry, I can't. I really have to. Hold on, guys. Let me get me out of the way. Okay, there we go. All right, better. Okay, let's so here. So sales cumulative counter to date. So the first parameter is always that. And that's it. I think it looks good. Let's uh, fix the decimal places. The auto is always wonky for me. And if you can find the measure, let's add it on here. Um, ah, ooh, I didn't mean to do that. All right, anybody knows why, why that didn't work? All right, Steve. You I'm looking. Uh, um... Yeah. So di didn't want no. didn't want to trip you guys up uh, to begin with, <laughs> but yeah, I tripped up myself. Um, so, we'll, how about we come back to this? But it has it. I know how to fix it, so I can just say 2016, and boom, it works now. Uh, and yeah, there's a clue. So some of you would be going, oh yeah, of course, right? And yeah, I mean, I, I had the same reaction internally, uh, but we'll talk about why that's the case. Why, when I clear this, it just goes like that. So we're here and, and of course, uh, you can tell right away that this, it kind of looks right because December is right and this one is right. Now, of course, I love, um, how, do you, how do you select, oops, how do you, ah, oh, shoot. So, oh man, I was, I was trying to copy this data. Uh, so I know you can copy data now, but I don't know if you can do the whole table. I I'll do something. Um, oh, well, for, for now, let's assume it's working, right? So you can see December it kind of adds up to the same thing. Uh, so that's it. And actually, as I'm talking about this, I'm getting a few ideas. So I think we started about 18 minutes into it. Let's go here, uh, cumulative sum. And the first thing was, uh, why is it broken when a calendar is not filtered? That's one. Uh, and, and the other one was a future months. Yes, that's a problem. Mm, 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 mm. I don't have that scenario though. Cool. Uh, so let's let's we'll come back to some of those. So this one is pretty easy, and then of course you can do variations of this, where you can say, uh, oops, not this guy. You can say something <clears throat> like, uh, same as dates year to date. You can do, uh, let's do sales cumulative quarter to date, and we do the same pattern exactly, and sales, and we say dates QDD. So yeah, instead of YTD, we use QTD and we say cal calendar 
Let's send the date column in there. Simple, simple, simple. Yep. Uh, okay, cool. So let's and let's add that here. Perfect. And the way to see this in action is if you s put this in a graph. So let's try that. Mm, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller for now. And we have this and we're going to make it a line chart. And and you can see what's going on here. We have the sales at the bottom. That's the green line. Right. So that's oops. So that's this line at the bottom every month. And, and you know, the scale is kind of wonky, so you can't see the detail, but it is moving up and down. And then quarter to date, you see this red line, which resets every quarter. So it's cumulative, cumulated, January, February, March, boop, reset, up from May, June, boop, reset, and so forth. And of course, the sales year to date just kind of keeps going up, but not forever, though. Uh, let's see what happens if I remove year from here. Uh, okay, that wasn't too happy. Uh, what about two, 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 two? Oops. Mm. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe let's try something different. I think I let's go month year. Ah, better. So yeah, you can see the year to date one resets every January. All right, so man, lots of thoughts. Uh, you know, and so we have fiscal calendar, custom calendar, and when sums break. So all of this stuff, these are worthy questions, and I'll circle back if, if any of you have uh, questions around that. We'll, we'll probably do get this one. But I want to talk about this last scenario when sums break. So for that, let's do this. Let's uh, keep this one and just duplicate it. Mm -hmm. and page two. Okay, cool. I don't need the graph. I don't need. I don't need uh, these measures here. Maybe we'll just pick one quarter to keep things really simple. Oops. Where's my quarter? There it is. Filter. Q1. Let's try that. Okay, so we have Q1 sales and we have the cumulative sales. Ooh. Oh man, I keep thinking of topics. We'll see how many you guys ask me about life today. Like, you know, not like year to date, like show me complete life to date cumulative. So this one, uh, we we can say that it kind of works. I mean, these these two match, but sometimes people are doing something like this. And I have no idea what that's going to look like. Um, okay, cool. So if we look at this, let me fire up an Excel file here. Excel. Okay, coming up, my friends. Mm. So here, if I have 1725 and 538, 629, what is the average of these? It's 964, all right? So, and we'll talk about like, what is the right average, but there are valid scenarios where your calculation 
is not actually sum. So it often happens in, in, in cases where the measure that you're doing like a cumulative for is not just a, a, a simple sum, right? So sales is just sum of sales amount and you use sales is dates year to date and it works. But the measure is something else and it could be anything interesting. It could be like average sales order Ooh, ending balances, that's a great one. So I was like, oh, I have ending balance in January, February, March, and the measure by itself calculates correctly for each month, right? But then you look at the average and you say, Avi, it's wrong. Cumulative is not working. Has anybody seen that? And if there is any other scenario uh, which you've run into, like, yeah, I, was, I had this measure and it didn't work, let me know. Now, what's happening there, though? You know, so you're saying it's it's not working, and of course I disagree with them. I say it's it's working just fine, <laughs> you know. And I think that the challenge is that that human learning, machine learning gap. So humans are, are believe it or not, we're much smarter than Power BI. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to believe that, <laughs> depending on who you're talking to. But uh, but yeah, so we we do these intuitive leaps, and it, it's it is going to happen. You're going to be looking at a number, and you will say. Dude, it makes sense. Just, just this, do this, get this number, and get this number, and get this number, and add it up. It'll even happen in cases where you're kind of supposedly adding things, like ending balance. But you would see the cumulative pattern, and it will be wrong. So you would say, hey, all I'm telling you is give me kind of the, the cumulative for this, and it'll be wrong. So actually, you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even write uh, the cumulative. Uh, let's try it. So average sales... So if you say average sales amount per order, and we say cumulative year to date, and I'm gonna say calculate to, to, to average, and then I'll say dates, year to date, calendar date. That do, 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 do. let's add it in here. Oh wow! Yeah. So did that work? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I need to maybe use a little bit smaller names. I, I like descriptive names. Uh, let's do it here, right? So, so maybe. You're not expecting 743. What you want, and, and sorry, this is a little bit of a contrived scenario, but you really want the answer to be 964, which is, uh, so for one, why is it doing 743? Because it's not going month by month. It's, it's at the cumulative level. It's taking the whole span, January, February, March, and doing the calculation as you described. So it takes the total sales for January, February, March, which is this, takes the total order and just divides the two. So it's not really doing month by month. And that's a pretty key lesson that, you know, each cell is kind of in an island, if you will. It's calculated using the same process. So if you have actually maybe a good, uh, good reference would be, if you go to my channel, there is a I can video and I would, I would highly mm -hmm. recommend it because it breaks down the process. If you're struggling with kind of DAX and filter context and stuff. Now, of course, there's more in my course, but uh, let's see if you can search it by ICANN. ICANN. Um, oh, yeah, this, this playlist is great. So if you go to the playlist, it, it talks about the step-by-step, -step how every single Hello, my friends, DAX mm -hmm. for, uh, formula is calculated. It's the exact same process, and it repeats for every single cell. All right, so uh, quiz time to the YouTube folks. If I do want, I don't want the 743 number. I want this 964 number. And clearly, the, the dates here today thing doesn't do it for me. So this doesn't work. What would I do? Cool, so type it in. Uh, so Steve, catch me up. Any, any other interesting discussions? Any other key questions which... I'll probably still park them now, by now, but uh, maybe we can log them. Yeah, yeah, Avi, we had um, a question about getting a cumulative year-to-date total for sales commission 
that is based off monthly information but paid quarterly. Ah, got it. Based monthly quarterly. Oh, yeah, and then and then and then Guy just had a comment: an average of a column of averages is incorrect. So. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't come up with a better scenario, so apologies for that. It's a bit contrived, but uh, there, there, yeah, you're gonna have to take my word for it right now. Right now, some of you may be like, "Oh, what is Abby doing?" There are real scenarios where y you would you would want to do things like that. Sure. Um, yeah, ending balance. That's a great one where the the calculation returns you an ending balance, and you just want to kind of see that. Hey, where is my balance gonna average? Being so that's a better example, but I don't have the data set for that. Uh, good comment though, guy. Uh, good, good warning. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So, uh, Steve, do, do you remember who, who asked this question the cumulative year to date thing for the commission? Yeah, uh, first initial is A Weiss. Okay, all right, cool. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah, that's a cool question, and, and maybe it, it is solved uh, with this approach. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. You, wow. Jen is like connecting with everybody. And that's awesome. You know, that I talked about the connection. So, so when, when you have the scenario and, and again, I mean, imagine ending balance or some other thing, which is kind of, you want to go kind of month by month, kind of row by row. You, you don't want to recalculate it at this level. Well, so whenever I hear myself saying these things like go row by row, I'm thinking an X function, right? So X function is a whole class family of functions, which is uh, iterators. And some of them have X in them, others actually do not. So X functions, so there's of course the, the, the min X, uh, max X and average X and so forth, long list of them, the others standard deviation X. But there is also one of the biggest X functions, filter. Oh my God, it's it's huge, right? Anybody who's used, been using Power BI and writing DAX formulas, you know the filter function. And in my mind, I always see it as filter X. It's a filter X function. It's an iterator. Another one that I was reminded recently is top N. Top N is also an X function. So top N X. I don't know. That's how I think about it. So cool. So let's uh, let's try. So anytime you, you feel yourself like, you know, kind of row by row, uh, the, the the guy's warning stands that average of averages doesn't make sense, but just just uh, humor me here. Mm, cool. So let's go over here and we're going to get rid of this guy. And instead, what we're going to say is mm, Sales amount per order uh, average over months, something like that. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. And again, an X function. So I really wish you could write it an X function starting with X, but you can't, the autocomplete doesn't work. But that's how I actually think. Sometimes I would even like. You don't have to decide, do you want min, do you want max? Sometimes obvious, but when I'm thinking, I don't care about it. I just put something in there. I just want an X function. So I'm not thinking about this part because actually this part comes last. So I'm just thinking about the X. So X, so that's an iterator. Now, what do I want to iterate over? Well, in this case, I'm iterating over months. So I'll uh, put that there and here. Let's do value. So so months is a column. So I could say calendar and uh, month. But if you notice that it 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 doesn't it doesn't accept that it doesn't accept col uh, columns. It accepts a table. But you can take a column and turn it into a table by saying values. And that's uh, values is like this wizard. It can do like five different things. That's one of them. So you say some X values. Let me hold on. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. So some X values. We got that. So again, sorry. So ignore the sum part. X X function iterate row over row by calendar month and then do what? Well, give me the average sales amount per order, which I already have calculated. 
And this is where I'm saying that the last part comes in. So at the end is this part executed. And what do I want in this case? In this case, I want an average. So I'm going to fill that in. Actually, let me just type that in. So average X, right? So that this part is the last thing to be executed. It does the X, does the iteration for every row. It calculates this, and then it's then it lifts its head, head up and says, okay, I did that for every row. Now what do you want me to do? And then we can say, oh, average. Or we can just say filter. It's like, oh, yeah, just, just return me those rows. That's it. Don't do any math. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, sales order would be... All right, where did I put it? Oh, there we go. I put it in budget. Apologies. Let's move that to sales and let's stick that in here. Oops. And we'll get that 965 number. It's probably uh, not meaningful in this scenario. But again, imagine, imagine if you had like ending balances. So if you had like ending balance by month and you're just trying to say, oh yeah, you know, so whatever that number is and, and cumulative is not working. If you do cumulative or total, it doesn't work. Then you just bring in the next function. Cool. I'll stop there. Hopefully that was helpful. Let's, uh, Mm, let's see what you guys thought. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. do, do, do. So Steve, thanks for pointing these out. So, uh, so, uh, a wise, uh, I think, uh, the cumulative year to date sales commission, Weiss. if you can calculate it, on a monthly basis, um, what I would do, yeah. So I, I, it feels like you would have a similar pattern as we did here. So you would you would have a measure, which uh, which calculates it based on the month, and once that is returning the right number, you would just say, oh yeah, now iterate over the months, and give me that. And of course, when you would present it. What you would do is you would you would not show the months because that number is meaningless. I mean, it's just, um, you know, like the, if you would show the payout number, you're not going to use the months. You would just say, uh, uh, where's my calendar? Oh, I have my filter. Hold on. Do, 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 do. So calendar and uh, hey, there's a little bit of typing in your side, I think, Steve. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's all right. No, no big deal. So let's put quarter here. And of course, I have it filtered. Uh, hmm. What, what happened there? I expected to see four quarters. Oh, this is Is this guy filtering it? I'm not really sure how this is still filtered, but um, okay, I'm, I'm sure it's pilot error. Uh, so uh, you would, for this scenario, you would just uh, pre show it quarterly, but the measure would be would be monthly. Measure would be monthly, and you would calculate it uh, for the quarter level the same way. You would say, "Yep, go to go to each month." Uh, where did that go? This guy. Try to use this pattern. So uh, let me see if I can paste it in the window as well. See if that works. So try that um, and give that a go. Cool. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, cool. So I know we have a question from Manuel. Let's go to that. I don't see anything else on the comment board. And yeah, we'll try 
maybe one of you guys calling in if you have other questions. All right, so let's go. Mm, we have 57. Manuel was asking about a matrix, and you had product, product description, years, and columns. Show detail without drill down. Okay, Man uh, Manuel, go ahead and unmute yourself. That way we can talk. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to reconstruct what you have, and we'll see how that goes. So you said you have a matrix. I'm going to make it really oops, big. Oh, all right. So let's put, you mentioned a product. So we're going to put, uh, let's say, product category, product uh, product subcategory, and then we'll just use something simple sales. But on the columns, you have the years. Okay, um, all right. AdventureWorks data is always a little fun. If you look at the size. Mm -mm. All right, so I, I have this and I have to kind of drill down to look at the subcategory and I can have additional levels in there if I want it. I could, I could put uh, after subcategory, I don't know, maybe product name or color doesn't, you know, I could put anything, but yeah, you have to kind of drill up and down and you can drill down selectively you can say I only want to see under bikes and I only want to see kind of mountain bikes and and so forth so tell me again you said something about being able to show the the, the detail like the product uh, yet tell me item item description what, what is that about yeah, I want to see it in the same row. So, you know, the bikes, instead of having to drill down, I want to see it yeah. in the same in the same row. So bikes and then in the same row, the, yeah. you know, 28 million shows the subcategory. Okay. So what if we change it to, to a, a list, Ooh, but you can't get ear yep. on the columns? On the columns, yep. All right, all right, cool. So tell me, are you interested in this column or not really, the total? For so, now, I guess we are not, yeah. but in okay, different okay. Yeah, that's, that's words, <laughs> we, might, we might be. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, uh, let's now do that. So um, yeah, so folks, I, I mean, obviously, as soon as he said, I knew where I would go with this. I want to check in with the YouTube gang and see if you guys felt it. And and, and, and I don't know. I, I don't want to get too Star Wars around it, but uh, <laughs> it starts to feel like a disturbance in the force, you know, <laughs> where you kind of sense it like, oh, yeah, this is where this is going. And, and, and you know, it, it happens over time and um, yeah, I don't, it, it, it's a fun journey. Okay, cool, so so yeah, so I'm gonna pause for a little bit because I know there's a little bit of delay. So friends, we, we have this problem. So let me describe the problem again and you tell me what do you think is, is a way to solve it? I'm sure there are many, so I'm just thinking of one right now. So we have the problem that in a matrix, we can drill down and and then see kind of this stuff and accessories, bike stands and that sort of stuff. Um, actually, um, let's, let's uh, right? But we want it to be like this, category, subcategory, product name. But, you know, we want, we still want the ear to be on the columns up there. So how do we do that? 
and hmm. so now of course this is not a problem in Excel right if you were doing this in Excel so let's think out of the box okay so some answers coming in so guys saying it can be built by making a template in Excel then bring the template to a list then build the figures to lay in that's right that's that's what I was thinking uh, Eric is saying concat cat and subcat into one field ooh okay one one oh oh I see so <clears throat> concatenate category subcategory product name into one field I'm, I'm just gonna write all of them down and hey they're all good ideas and I, I love thinking out of the box and I definitely give kind of my students and, and all of you guys freedom to think out of the box but the fun part this is where I really get a kick out of things is understand being able to then say what is the trade-off what do I gain or lose by this approach or the other so we have the contenders my friends is Guy Johnson and, and I shouldn't make it sound like a competition but yeah so the one idea is that uh, it can be built by making a template making a list uh, okay create a, a list to play the figures in there's a there's a name for that mm, this pattern and I'll come back to that and Eric had the idea that we say concat cat uh, can, can let's just say concatenate uh, fields into one and uh, category uh, sub category and product uh, product name all right so let me go back to Manuel so if I say that you can easily go to the query editor and create a field which says I don't know product label something like that and it's just a field uh, just, let, let me just go there just to make sure that you're all clear on what we're talking about okay so I'm gonna go to product and I'll say if I need to show those things in one column I'm gonna add a custom column um, and in here I'm gonna say give me give me a um, category and for now we're gonna use some dividers to make it pretty but for now let's just do this and product name so if I uh, let's actually Heck, maybe maybe let's just do it. That'll be even more fun. If we do this and we go back, Ooh, I'm excited. All right, that is done. So what if we build a matrix like this? Um, should I color it? Uh, let's just put some color on it. Okay, that looks horrible. But <laughs> okay, let's go with that. So now we have. Uh, so I'm gonna turn off the total just to uh, get some space. And column rows of totals. Okay, so we have this, and now instead of that, so actually we can go. Oh no, no, no. We we do need matrix, but we're gonna come here, and we're gonna remove these guys, and we're gonna add the product label here. All right. So now I'll ask uh, Manuel. Well, would this kind of work? Now you see that, and you see by year. He doesn't sound happy. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, tell me why. You know, so that way we understand. Like, why? Why isn't this? Good. Oh, wait a second, maybe. 
Well, I'll get you started. I mean, for one, it doesn't look very clean. Like it's it's harder to read, and we can work harder and maybe like put like multiple spaces on there, but it doesn't have the clean feel that this has, right? I mean, I don't know, like everything lined up. It's gonna be really hard to do, really really hard to do in in uh, in concatenating because we'll have to see what is their longest string. Oh man, it's, I don't even want to go there, right? So it, let's mark that as you know it's a slight drawback let's say so visually let's say it looks less appealing is there anything else okay so uh pros is it definitely works i mean it does do that so cons visual appeal is questionable all right, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another one, Manuel. And once I say it, you'll, you'll probably say, oh, yes, of course. And you're probably thinking about that, too, is uh, this one is a is is hard coded. It it assumes that we kind of know the pattern, know the things that the report needs. Uh, so when I started building Power BI models, I really thought that I was building them for myself and you know just to do reports from a manager and that sort of stuff the same model grew and grew and ended up being used by 600 plus users so I've learned my lesson whenever you design a model you have to design it in such a way that not only it works for you but it also works for anybody else who ends up using it so if we go this route the drawback there and again it's it's it's, it's you have to understand just the trade-offs like what are you trading off so you're trading off flexibility here in the sense that what if they wanted not the the product name but what if they wanted us to see product color and we're stuck we're stuck in that old world of uh, you know kind of going to do the central IT team and uh, going to them with a beg begging ball and gosh I've, I've lived uh, that life uh, a long time you go there and say oh yeah can you can you create this product label with color on it, category, subcategory, color, I really need it. And, and this is a, yeah, we'll put it on a list. And if it makes the cut, then maybe you'll see it in three months, otherwise not. So cool. So so what do you think, right? I mean, would, would you say that that's could be a potential drawback? Like you may not know exactly the combination you want to see that might change. Yeah. And, and um, can you use slicers? So will Power BI recognize, uh, yeah, you know, if you want to yeah, look? Yes look for mountain bikes right or the or these yeah whatever yeah. it is yeah so that's the good news the slicers would absolutely work on this so let's just try it do, 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 do. let's put category on there and uh, uh, subcategory e even the stuff that is not in the <clears throat> let's uh, let's add a color on there as a slicer too oops didn't want to do that mm. Take that off. So even the items which are not in the label itself, so obviously this is going to work. So bikes is just returning bikes. Uh, accessories is just that. And if I say accessories and say bike stands, yep, I only see one. Let's clear it. Go back to bikes and say mountain bikes. So yeah, now it's just mountain bikes. And... Even the stuff that's not in here, like if I say only show me silver, boom, I'm only saying silver. And and of course, the the, the why that's working is uh, product label is just kind of an attribute. So it's it's going to this table. Product label is one field, but if you apply a filter to a specific field, like as long as you say filter, this is silver that column obviously gets filtered as well, right? So product label is now filtered to everything just silver. And by the way, uh, guys, uh, you know, filter filter context, I can clarify it for you in, in like one sentence. A filter context is nothing but a filtered set of rows. This, you know what we did right here? That's what filter context is. Uh, but then why is it so complicated? That's another story. We'll save it for another day. Uh, but yeah, so this uh, filtering works, but this is not elegant. Uh, so cool. So, but that was good. That was good for a. Um, let's see if there are any other comments there. Avi, uh, Rick had a. Yeah. 
proposed solution. You might okay. take a look at that using Power Query. Ah, okay. Um, stepped option, turn off. So I just see his last comment. Did he... You got to go up a couple where um, it says create a table in Power Query that has the same layout as the table, Ooh. but in the columns. Yeah. Create a, a table with the same layout as the columns. Uh, yeah. Let's do. Uh, so this was uh, Rick. All right, cool. So good, good guys. This is like awesome. I mean, frankly, uh, you know. So obviously, you need a balance of both. You need structured learning. I think that's that's the good place to start. And and I'm gonna assume that you've done it in some form or the other if you really haven't then uh, no reason <laughs> no reason not to go uh, check out my power bi tutorial right so that's a great place to start and of course there's a lot more uh, inside my course so structured learning is good but then sometimes when you're kind of poking around and i always say the real learning comes from doing right so once you apply it to real scenarios and especially if they're your own scenarios sometimes it's even hard to think about somebody else's scenario i think i'm comfortable with that now because well i kind of do that for a living and i've done that for years but if it's your own scenario it just kind of fits in and it just makes so much more sense so i definitely encourage every one of you to apply that but then when you get when you start applying it you're going to get into these things and then it kind of really sinks in. And often I learn and constantly relearn my messages, you know, so <laughs> absolutely, right? So this thing, I'm like, yes, that's a solution. So let's let's go into this one. Uh, so let's go over here and I'll let you, let you guys tell me what the trade-off is. So we talked about this and, and, and believe me, so this one is a little bit simple scenario. It's not that complicated. You're gonna run into a lot more complicated stuff and you would think about this approach. We'll say, well, I can uh, do this. I can say reference. And by the way, great interview question. If you're looking to hire somebody, just ask them what's the difference between duplicate and reference. When would you use, use which? What is the risk, if any, of using one of these? And. <laughs> All right, I love this one. All right, cool. So we'll use reference, not duplicate in this case. So we'll say product uh, report, All right? Let's uh, let's call it spade a spade. We're building a report. So product report, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna bring in the sales. So for that, uh, so there are two key things here: merge and append. And they're really simple. I mean, the merge is when you want to add like a column here. That's merge. Uh, append is when you, you you're trying to kind of stack stack a set of rows. Like I want to stack this row, and then let's get some pink in there. Stack these set of rows. That's append. So right now we want to bring in a column. We want to bring in sales. Uh, let me go a little bit smaller. We okay, cool. All right, I'm off to the side, and here, what we're going to do is merge, and we're going to merge with the sales table, and bring in sales, oh, oops, sorry, not, we're not merging, we want the sales amount, but we're merging based on product key. It's kind of like a VLOOKUP, I guess. Um, okay, not all products had sales, that's okay. And oh, actually, shoot! This this uh, this wouldn't work. We have to go the other way. Apologies. Backtrack. And if you know why that wouldn't have worked, good for you, my friend. <laughs> you probably saw it before I did. So let's go to sales and go from there. So we'll go to sales, and again, we'll create a reference, and we'll say product report and we'll keep product and where's my sales amount we'll use just sales amount and we'll say remove other columns so we have product key sales amount now we're going to merge it oh shoot man that was, hold on actually that step was so good I got to write it down when was this approximately one hour three minutes into it Avi made a boo-boo. 
Avi walked into a dead end of merging product to sales. This would have mm, uh, resulted in uh, war destruction. I don't know. Something really bad would have happened. Okay, so I'll leave a note for myself. Uh, cool, so we're here, product key, and now we're gonna merge with the product table on the product key, and hit okay. And we're gonna bring in, uh, oh, sorry, I should have kept the, the years. The order date, let's do that. So order date, merged queries, I go to product, product, do, 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 where, where do I go? Uh, oh yeah, I need category, subcategory, and product name. Oh, there it is, sorry. Yeah. We got that, then we're gonna merge it here with the order date calendar. So let's go to calendar, order date, date. Um, oh, it's not very happy with that. Let's see what's going on. So this one is a date. Now let's try it again. It was just saying they have to be the same data type. Calendar date order date mm, looks happier now I think and we can bring in year okay all right and now I guess I can just do a group by Add column transform group by. Okay, at some point, guys, I might stop because you may have noticed that this has the the exact same problem that the other scenario had. So by year, product, category, which is it's it's hard coded. If you need a change, so again, imagine that scenario where now your report is being used by 600 users more, and not just to consume the report, but build their own report. Obviously, you want that. I mean, this is self-service BI. If you use Power BI and not enable them to self-serve, they're still coming back to you, coming back to a central team with a list of requests, and you're writing them down and saying yay or nay. That's not the idea. Now, of course, you're going to do that for some stuff, but not all of it. So category, subcategory, uh, product name, and we're going to say just sum of uh, uh, sales amount, and, and we'll just say sales. And the last thing we would do is we would uh, we would take year and put in the column. So I'll I'll stop there. But yeah, so this has the same challenge as as before. So this is not uh, this is kind of hard hard coded. This is a, a, you know a, you know there's a concept of design time and run time. So this is at the time of designing you kind of hard code it. Uh, same thing here design time uh, we want something that is dynamic where they can freely choose the columns they want so for that I'm gonna go back to Guy Johnson's list and the name that this one is create a list is the disconnected table or, or a sli disconnected slicer so and that is a whole family of approach if you Google that, gosh, Power BI disconnected table or slicer, either those or you, um, or DAX disconnected table or slicer, you're gonna get a whole list of things. So we're gonna uh, abandon this approach now while it's still running. Let me just get rid of that, wasn't gonna go any, any, uh, anyway. And uh, let's do, let's do a disconnected, dis, uh, di oh, gosh, how, 
Oh, you, you know what? Actually, uh, sorry, I take that back. Uh, it's uh, I, I take it back. <laughs> no, no, I'm walking to a few dead ends here. So maybe it's it's not that create a list. Um, so I I think what's the simplest way here is just some um, gosh custom measures. And and as I say it, I already see the drawback of this. This is also hard coded, but in a different way. Uh, so I'll 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 uh, I'll present it to uh, Manuel and, and and let you choose, my friend. Um, okay, cool. So let's go back here and go back way over here, and let's try the the measures approach. So Manuel uh, two. Okay, so we want. I'm gonna keep this this list, and we just want ears. On the top. Okay, I mean, and one, once I do it, you, oh, everybody would go like, "Yeah, of course, I, I saw that, I knew that." And and I'm not saying it's perfect, but let's just try it. So we'll go modeling, and I'm just going to create a quick separate table to keep these measures because I uh, keep losing them. Ba -ba 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 -ba, and we'll call it formulas. Is it doing okay? Oh, shoot, ran out of water. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and I'm actually gonna hide the column. Didn't need that. And we're gonna create a new measure. And and I really wanted to you know, like throw over a curtain, <laughs> do my magic trick and come back like, ta-da, it works. But unfortunately I can't, so we'll just uh, uh, do it this way. So let's do, oops, let's try it again. So 2014 sales equals to, to, to calculate sales year, oops, messed that up. And uh, oh boy, typographically challenged today. Sales that worked year. Mm. Where's my calendar year? There we go. So calendar year equals twenty fourteen. Let's move it to zero. Let's change it. Oh, perfect. It's in formulas. And let's do one more. In 2015. 2015. A new measure. 2016. 2016. Ooh. Okay. Let's at least see how it looks. Okay, that's not a great category. Let's try road bikes, touring bikes. Okay, I'm not proud of it, but I'm not sure. I mean, I think there's a disconnected. I, I'm not. I feel like the disconnected slicer is not a solution. So, so, Manuel. So, uh, what do you think? Yeah, Steve. Was there something else I mean, in the chat? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a, a comment from Guy, mm -hmm. uh, referring to a uh, Enterprise DNA on YouTube has a yeah, uh, financial template that he feels can be applied very well to this situation. Perfect. Yeah, folks. So lots of resources online. Go seek it out. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, wherever you can learn, there's never, um, actually, in fact, that, that is, that is, a that is in a way, 
uh, part of the problem, if you will. I know for folks who are just starting out, they're like, there's too much there. But if you're well on your journey, lots of resources out there. So great. Uh, so Manuel, uh, tell me what you feel about this. I can make a case. Yeah, is it really want. is it really that easy? You don't use a matrix. You you use the the list here. Well, so that's the challenge with matrix, right? So, oh, actually, there is one other option, which is you create the report in Excel. I mean, I don't know, and and it it's kind of sounds crazy, but they, we have run into scenarios where it just didn't work. Anything we tried just didn't work, and we ended up can, hooking up an Excel report because in Excel, something like this is trivial because you can take a pivot table and kind of flatten it, right? So that it's not nested. Uh, actually, let's do that too. Uh, if that is an option for you, if that does sound appealing. So anybody, who, a lot of times when people come to me and they're really struggling with something, they want like, it seems like they want ultimate control over their reporting. I'm like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to show it this way. And I'm like, dude, just go use Excel. You know, it's, it's right. So uh, always keep that in mind that I, I, I and you can always choose Excel as a reporting tool. Keep your model in Power BI, publish in one place, have it be the single source of truth, but you can always connect Excel. But uh, but yeah, so for, for you, I'm, you could do it this way. Let me, let me make a case for it, all right? So for one, it's ultimately flexible. You can, you know, you can swap out product name and stick in product color or any combination, any combination in the world that you can think of, and it would still work. So you can say, yep, for this stuff, and, and right, I mean, you, you can throw in model name there, doesn't doesn't even matter, right? So so that's that's its plus, it's not kind of hard-coded as we were doing you know, with concatenation or building the report, uh, you know, which is usually not a great idea, not that I've never done that. Uh, so that's ultimately flexible. The downside is that obviously it's hard coded by the years. So if you want, uh, I mean, and, and, and again, maybe you can keep like a separate formula table and in advance build out all of these measures. Build out measures from like 2010 or whenever your data starts to 2050. I don't care, right? I mean, 2050. And that way, it's you don't have to go back to the design the author doesn't have to do it the, all the consumers if they're like oh yeah i want to see 2016 17 18 18 19 20 they can just you know kind of go to that folder and drag that in cool so 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 yeah so you think this this would kind of work awesome thank okay. you cool and of course I would name it this way, so I wouldn't name it 2014. I wouldn't do that because I want to be able to look at it and know that it's sales. But uh, well, it's somewhat of a recent feature. You can just rename it in the visual. So in the visual, you can drop the sales label. So notice that the the measure is still called sales. So I don't get confused. That's important for the model author, but for the end users, they see a cleaner label. Uh, so let's just try that. Do that as a last touch. Boop, boop, boop. And shoot, do the da. So that's what I would do. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys was that, and, and again, we have actually, so this was this was within Microsoft Finance. Uh, so the story is we went in there, we started working with them, and we had this naive idea. I said, oh, we're taking everything to Power BI. All the reports are going to be in Power BI. Ah, stupidest, stupidest idea ever. It, we, so quickly we realized that that's not going to happen. Um, it's 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 about creating the model, the single model, but then having flexibility and complete control and independence in choosing the reporting tool. So if I have my model in Power BI, I can still go and say connect to that so let's just do that right now mm, from analysis services and uh, so right now I'm running that Power BI desktop server 601120 so this Power BI desktop file this one we just created uh, let's just connect to that and solve the same thing which we have been struggling to solve for the last 30 minutes or more. Let's just try it. So we'll go to, and and you know what, you have to love this. This is 
built for like the hardcore analysts. Like I would love to see something like this in Power BI and maybe someday it'll be there. Uh, one of the silliest asks I've seen on the ideas.powerbi.com site is give me a pivot table. I'm like, guys, you have a pivot table, right? It's the world's best pivot table ever. It's already there. So uh, just use it. So product and we're going to say, give me category, give me subcategory, give me product name. And and then we're going to go to calendar and say, I want year up on the column. And then we're going to go to sales and we're going to say, show me sales. Uh, perfect. So we have all of that. And now if you decide that Oh, I don't want it like that. I don't want it kind of grouped together like this. I want it flat. Well, you just, right? I mean, Excel is ultimately flexible. So you just go here. Uh, let me just expand it back again. Expand entire field. And you say, repeat all item labels. Uh, okay, now, uh, uh, Steve, there's an option here to turn off the, the plus and minus, right? Like if you don't even want to see that. Pivot table options. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. I imagine there is. Yeah, that's a display. Ah, oh, there we go. Display show expand collapse. And, and look at that. I mean, how long did that take us? I mean, like five minutes. An Excel wizard, any, by wizard, I mean anybody who's been using pivot tables and such wouldn't even blink at this it's it's a non-issue and 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 goes way beyond that right so power bi is great all of those interactive visualizations and stuff but when it comes to like control and uh, when i have analysts working through when they're trying to find out that 250 dollars accrual that happened in june for this company it's it's like they can fly through pivot tables and really find that needle in the haystack Power BI, I feel it's different. It's it's just, um, it, it, it's yeah, it has its own scenarios. You can design it to find that very specific needle in the, for a specific scenario, but Excel, uh, folks are used to Excel, I mean, they, they operate so much faster. I'll admit, uh, maybe I, I still feel it to some extent. I feel a little claustrophobic, especially when I'm debugging a measure, I go, I go kind of nuts because in here, I can just drag select cells and, and I can see kind of the count average sum and so forth. And I just do it so easily, feel so fluid. So often in debugging, I do exactly what I did right here, where I connected back to the model and then I debug in here. Well, uh, so Manuel, thank you for that journey. Hopefully, um, you know, this, this solution kind of works for you, but uh, I, I really enjoyed that journey. Uh, so thanks for that. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, let's see if there are any other questions on YouTube. Anything that I missed earlier? Uh, and, and, and if, if uh, Steve didn't catch it, folks, just repost. Uh, otherwise, I feel like in a, in a good place. You know that the saying in Vegas, like, quit while you're winning. So <laughs> I feel like, uh, uh, you know, in a good right now. Okay, so we'll wait just a few more minutes. So, Roll Avi, there, yeah, there, yeah. You, I think you see the question about uh, rolling sum in a matrix. Rolling sum. So, Mahido, Mahido, um, tell me a little bit more. And if you were, let's let's try this. Let's uh, actually, I think it's time. Uh, let's. Uh, so, if you did sign up, so I, I shared the talk bar BI link at the start, and let me just uh, send that again. So, so Mahito, if you can call in, it may make things easier. So go to talkbarbia.com and then there'll be a call in link at the bottom. And let's uh, give that a try. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'm almost there. Go to start the meeting. Oh, there we go. My account, my meetings, and talk bar BI. 
there we go all right so the the call in if you go to talkbarbia.com uh, did i have the page up so Mahita, if you if you signed up there. just uh go click this button and that mm -hmm. should should work all right uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll wait if you can join great otherwise uh, otherwise what I'm gonna ask you is tell me a little bit more about rolling rolling period so uh, yeah tell, tell me to give me a little bit more detail uh, let me just get this started over here so zero one twenty five thirty one. Uh, we're going. Oops. And this is Mahito. He's talking about rolling totals. Not sure how he put it. Rolling sum in a matrix. Okay. So while Mahito is kind of getting on board I'll, I'll set up rolling totals here I love rolling totals let's just try uh, one of these so this is Mahito and folks let me just save this file and again if you if you want access to that file and if you're if you sign up at talkbarbia.com you have access to the notes that I'm taking right now and you have the access to the files as well uh, so I'm going to stick that into Talk Power BI. This is certainly still 2018, although disappearing fast, right? It's always a wonder how the year goes by. Mm, 2018, 09, 28, 28, and Adventure Works, and we talked Manuel, Mahi, Mahito. Cool. So we'll stick that in there. And let's stick. Uh, so I think I talked about in the last call what I have. I have started to sometimes put like a question or the goal or the purpose of this page. Like, what's the key thing that I want to do for this page? And here it doesn't can't apply because I'm just doing Q and A. But uh, so I'll I'll say something like on this page, what I'm trying to solve is show my salespeople the key customers they need to contact right now the key accounts which we are in risk of losing actually somebody Tom Tom Farwell in a group he, he showed a, a whole dashboard of it was like support uh, not not support calls but kind of tickets and issues coming in and so forth and it was brilliant because it wasn't just showing the data it was then using a set of oh should no sorry it wasn't Tom it was uh, Nicholas Nemeth Nicholas showed me where he had built this smart engine with dials where you could say that which uh, so we have support issues coming in but which customers are top risk and it looked at if the same customer had reported 10 issues if the same customer has reported uh, has 10 issues open if the same customer has reported like uh, uh, in the last seven days they have reported a lot of issues and think about other risk factors like what would make you drop a service what would make you angry well if you have a lot of tickets open which haven't been you know responded you haven't been helped with that or clearly if you're if you're generating tickets every day then there's something going on so so yeah it was just list the top customers you need to call and and kind of save that save that customer so just really brilliant uh, so here uh, rolling some so we do have a caller let's see if it's uh, uh, Mojito uh, hi who's uh, uh, wait. yes Majid here uh, Majid, okay, sorry for yeah. messing up your name. Uh, no, no right? problem. So, Not awesome. at all. so Majid, uh, where are yeah. you calling in from? Uh, the Netherlands, Amsterdam. Netherlands, awesome. Mm. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we we certainly have uh, a few folks in in thereabouts. So it's evening for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of spiel. I'm talking to kind of the audience. You probably already know rolling sums. So uh, let's just do uh, let's just do a graph for this one. Um, we'll do it here. Maybe I'll do a list as well. We'll see. So we have. Oops. Um, I guess that can be small. Well, let's just stick date in there, and let's just do. I'm totally missing it now. Sales. So we have sales. 
cool so we have this and now let's define a rolling sum mm, so if we go to modeling and we say new measures and I'm gonna say sales rolling period um, I don't know three months um, three months three months yeah let's just do that so calculate sales and and this one I believe dates in period when you're looking for a span of dates dates in period is your friend so as with all time intelligence functions the first parameter is always without fail calendar date and if you if you are uh, you know if you don't have a calendar table uh, go to my channel and and from there you can you can grab the ultimate calendar table right here that's a, a pretty good one <laughs> alright so dates in period and here we would say let's see what are the other parameters Dates in period so I say start date so I want to start with whatever the max date shown in the period so max can I say calendar date yeah perfect so give me the max of that and then go back minus three um, a month let's try that okay do, do, do. and let's see how this works oh um yeah yeah would it would it be nice to do an average cool but that that's the idea so it's, it's summing up three months so it's kind of like apples to oranges sales is a single day uh so majid tell me a bit about your scenario so you said in a matrix rolling sum yeah tell me tell me a bit more about the data set what are you trying to build in the matrix oh, we uh, well yeah. if you have a uh rolling sum and uh on the columns you would like the to have the year or month and um, on the rows, you would like to have uh, something like category or subcategory. Ah, uh, got it. So we'll have got a month, year. Let's stick that up there. And we're going to let's filter it down to. Oops, don't do that. So we'll have the year and filter. Got a list and let's check 2015. Perfect. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, that's good enough. And on the column, uh, rows, we don't really care. I'm just going to throw like country on there. Cool. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that. Mm, actually, I wanted to do for here this graph for it to make sense. Mm, instead of instead of calendar here, I'll put month year again. Month year, and this one I'll say average sales. I'll divide it by three. That should be apples to apples. Nope. Divide by three. Mm, okay. Oh well. So here mm, we can put sales for that month itself. What rolling period are you looking for, Majid? Well, uh, normally twelve months. Twelve months. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 guys, twelve months is great to, uh, so, so rolling periods are, are great to kind of uh, drive out uh, fluctuations in your data. Um, so, so notice the the blue line. That's the actual sales. Let's actually see if we can show all all years. See how that looks. Yeah. So, so notice the this 
the sales line is a little jagged and it's, it's like, you know, it kind of bounces up and down. Like, you know, it has these, this peak, the high peak. So if you have data, which is really volatile, uh, you, you will see that if you have seasonality, you would see that. And if you notice the other one, this line, notice that it just smooths it out. So it takes that away. So if you have seasonality, all that stuff, so that's where rolling, rolling periods are great. And, and 12 months really flushes out all seasonality. Like, Otherwise, if you're comparing f February to January, first of all, uh, it's that whole 28 day thing. But otherwise, like February is always slow because it's colder. Well, I'm trying to think of examples here. Okay, cool. So we want rolling 12, uh, 12 months. And I think we're pretty close to that. So I'm just going to take this formula and just change that. And I'll say average sales for rolling 12 months. And I'll say calculate sales for the last, I can either say minus 12 months or I can say minus one year. Uh, let's, let's just say 12. I don't know. I like, I feel it. and then divide it by 12. So we don't, we don't end up with like 12 months. And I think that's going to be it. And let's just try it. Now, of course, the, the key is to debug it once just to make sure that it's right. Okay. So let's, uh, Let's debug it for one value. And this is where I love debugging in Excel. So let's pop over to Excel and let's do another sheet here. I'm going to stick this guy off to the side. Come in here. Uh, I'm just going to get like a new pivot table here. Oops, did I get everything? Probably not, because it's not. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, I missed the, the top column. Mm -mm -mm. Get in there, guys. Okay, got it. Do, 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 do. So here, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this, 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 and I'm gonna grab formulas. Oh, I do need to refresh it. Okay, so now I got the new measures. Let's just do average 12 months. And I'm going to go to my calendar and stick month year over there. And so let's, uh, let's solve it kind of in Excel. And how about that? So we'll go, how many is this? 12. Perfect. So we'll say the average of 12 is going to be sum the last 12 divided by 12. I mean, I'm only doing it to debug, but you can see that this number matches. And of course I can, I can kind of extend it down and uh, see. So uh, would you say that the measure is, is working Majid? I mean, that's, that's how you would do rolling 12 months, right? Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks like that. Yeah. So yeah. now, of course, the, the difference between Excel and Power BI, and when I say Excel, the old Excel, the modern Excel has Power BI built in using Power Pivot and Power Query, is that this is really, really fragile. And, and it's just, you know, like a whole bunch of formulas can easily break and that sort of stuff. But once you define a measure, which we have here, the measures are defined once used everywhere. So now that I've defined this measure, it's solid, it's rock solid, and I can slice and dice it any which way I want. So I was earlier talking about like a working pivot and a debug pivot and a reporting pivot. So this would be a classic working pivot that I would use when I'm building the measure. So I can quickly check that, yep, it looks right, it looks working, but that's not how I would report it. I may report it like like this guy. So let's, uh, you know, so, so it's the same number, let's try January 2015, 591. Let's just double check that number one. So January 2015, yeah, 591. That's what Excel is saying, and that's what our measure is returning. So, uh, so uh, the only 
issue Majid in in doing rolling periods and matrix is is frankly defining the rolling periods because once you have that you can show that in a matrix in a line chart column chart anywhere you want so so do you think this is going to work out this, or or or, or uh, maybe there's something else in your scenario as well yes uh, I think this is going to work out uh, great uh, thank you very much uh, awesome. Just one question. Is it yes. possible to uh, make the rolling months variable? Rolling months variable? Tell me more. Give me a scenario. So something something like uh, having a filter from 1 to 12 and uh, as soon as you click on 11, you get in the rolling months of 11 months. When yeah. you click on 12, you get 12 months or 13 or 14, etc. Now we're, now we're talking about fun. I'll throw another one at you. As you were saying, I thought of that, and that is pretty classic as well. Sometimes when people are doing rolling 12 months, they, they're they not looking at a calendar year. They just want to look at like this, this, this stuff. They just want to see the last 12 months all the time. Is, do you have that scenario? I know you were asking about something yeah. else, but do you have something like this where like right now we're in September, so let's yeah. do only do completed months. So I want to see august 2018 and going back through july 2017 right that's exactly 12 months back G got it got it so so uh and and i think you know what I, I should probably write it down so guys this is really good mm, let's uh so we're some matrix we talked about that let's do another one and we're gonna say zero one forty one twenty and uh, now that i know Majid's name Majid. And uh, hold on. Uh, awesome. So Majid is asking uh, about two things here. One is, can we vary the rolling period? Can I choose? I maybe I want to see six months rolling. Maybe I want to see ten months rolling. Something like that. Uh, or an I threw in. Well, the, the reason why I'm asking that is because uh, sometimes you have uh, a 12 month rolling. Uh, you want to see a, uh, a 12 yeah. month rolling up, but as soon as after the 31 of October, for example, it becomes the uh, the first of November, yeah. you would like to see 30 months back instead of 12. Very cool, and and and, and you know, like I I. I don't need to ask anything. I mean, I, the, 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 the fact is, guys, that that's where it's uh, it's about applying. And, and I call it Real Power BI, and I run those projects inside our class as well, where we tackle real-world projects. Because sometimes I hear requirements or some things which, which are bizarre. And sometimes they're too bizarre, so sometimes I push back. I'm like, do you really need it? But it, there are real scenarios. So as Majid is saying, it's like, hey, if, if October comes in, I want to just just – change it and I want to see 13 months rolling so uh, and and that is that is a valid point often with rolling uh, sorry I keep zooming in what I'm trying to uh, so let's uh, let's go back to to this this one we had done so remember rolling the key thing that it does it is smooths things out so uh, let's uh, go back here and clear all years and let's go back to this one uh, hey, hey, Steve, uh, I, yes, I forgot to mention one thing. So, uh, you know, first of all, thank you so much right, for, for doing the moderation. Really helped. And I really enjoyed kind of getting a chance to talk to you as well. But uh, I feel so embarrassed now that I should have made it. So um, the first R, that's all. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to ask more of you. So if you hang on, if you're able to hang on, great. But after the first R, Feel free to drop off anytime. All right, <laughs> you know I don't want to feel like like oh gosh, you know Steve like checking his watch like oh, no, when are you gonna it, be done? It, it's been a it's been an interesting uh, session, so I've learned a little oh, bit yeah. here. Oh gosh, yeah, and as I said, I'm uh, I love being able to do this in YouTube inside the class because I'm, I'm always relearning. So guys, let's uh, actually what I was gonna do was I'm gonna I was gonna copy this measure and show you six months. So if rolling period smooths things out, right? And you can see that, you can see kind of the sales and you can see the, right? You can see how, 
you know, how, how, notice this beak. When it hit beak over here, this guy didn't just, boop, you know, it didn't jump up. So that's what it does. So if you have looking at stock data or something like that, anything which is had like high variability, it really helps you understand like what's the underlying trend and you don't get distracted by that. Like, oh, jump this month, jump that, down that month, something like that. So what do you think is going to happen if we define a, a rolling six months? So hold that thought. I want you to have an answer in your head. Like, how do you visually see it, right? So you, you saw the green line and you saw this line, which is rolling three months. Now let's just do rolling six months and, and you can check whether what you had in your mind matched the results. So if I say rolling six months, really, really simple once you know the pattern. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. And we go in here and we add it. And well, if if you notice what it did is it's even even smoother than the other one. So so notice here where there was a peak in sales, this one jumped up a little bit. But this one is even calmer, even straighter, right? I mean, notice the jagged edges in here. Notice this jagged edge, right? Uh, so it, it smoothed out. So, so yeah, the, the the larger period you choose, and again, you can be months, you can be weeks, but it's it's very flexible, it's very fluid, and I often see people kind of go back and forth and say, hey, show me six months rolling, twelve months rolling, all of that, and, and you, you kind of just get a feel for it, and usually you settle down on some one or two standard ones. Uh, cool. So, uh, but can we do that without having to hard code them? So we have taught. Oh man, this is this is a theme now. This is this is I love it. So. Uh, how about we vary rolling period without hard coded measures? So if you haven't sensed it already, I generally don't like the idea of hard coding because again, I have had that experience of being a business user at the whims of IT, going to them with a the begging bowl, it's like, oh, can I please have this? And I don't want to do that to my users because whenever I hard code anything, it's 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 set in stone and they're gonna have to come back to me and I'm gonna have to check my list. Like, oh my god, I have like 30 other things to do. I don't want to become that, right? So <laughs> kind of like that Star Wars story, right? So what happened to uh, 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 you know? So uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking out of the name. Uh, Luke's Luke's dad, <laughs> Darth Vader. <laughs> you know, you started on the good side but turned into bad. So um, so yeah. So I wanna I wanna avoid hard coding as much as I can. So uh, let's stay here. Rolling without hard coded measures. So as you saw, we can hard code it. I, I, you know, I can define uh, twenty of these <laughs> as we had hard coded these ones here. Uh, so we can say six, three months, four months, five months, six months, twelve months, all of that. But we want to avoid that. We don't want to do that. Okay. So how do we do it? Wow. So it's uh, it's going to be Majid 2.0. This is going to be much better. All right, I'm going to remove the O here. Oops. All right, so we are here. And oh gosh, I almost want to do it in Excel. Um, let's keep this one. And let's keep the slicer. So yeah, just give me a second, guys. Let me just set it up. Mm -mm -mm. Um, that's sick. Okay, so this so, so we have, and this one is, uh, right now it is rolling twelve months. That's what we have, but we want it to be variable. So that means, so if you want something like that where it's variable, well, how are we going to know? Well, the user has to provide an input, right? I mean, they have to click something. And for them to click something, I have to show them that option. So I'm going to start there. And I'm just going to say, enter data. Mm -hmm. So in your case, Majid, you were talking about kind of 12 months, 13 months. So I'll say, select rolling period. And I don't know, I'll just say six. Oh, I'll, I'll start with, uh, let's just try six. Uh, actually, I'll just do the ones that I have, three, six, and 12, but of course you can, you know, modify it easily for 13. So say rolling period. And I'm going to load the stable. Ooh, 
exciting. Okay, my friend, where are you? Are you doing something? Oh, it's probably popped open. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Alrighty. Cool. Where did that table go? Rolling period, right here. And all I have to do now is add that as a slicer, and that's my input mechanism. And let's make that a little bit bigger. Did that work? Nope. All right, cool. So if you, so now I have given them an ability to select the rolling period. Simple. Add it in there. Add a field. Add a table. And now they can say, oh, I want six. I want. Oh, sorry. I want three. I want six. I want twelve. But if you notice that right now, obviously it doesn't change anything. It flickers, but the numbers stay exactly the same. But that's okay. That's the next thing we're going to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here, come back to our measures, and actually I'm going to remove this measure and add um, a few more, maybe. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to say maybe just one more. Let's just try it. So we have what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, rolling sum. Uh, uh, working measure. So this, by the way, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm using the approach that was illustrated in in a lot of detail and finesse by Oh, shoot. Um, I thought that was pretty recent. It is pretty recent uh, by Matt Allington in in one of the earlier live shows, which is uh, which is where here right here. So simplify DAX measures using variables. YouTube, so hello and watch well that. Uh, really cool session. So uh, and he he talked about this so that why he calls it a working measure. And you would see what I'm gonna do with it. So I'm gonna say variable uh, uh, variable give me uh, give me the selected rolling period. Selected rolling period. And there I can say selected value. And I will find that column. Perfect. I'll do that, and I can return return the same thing. So let's just kind of do that for a second. So that's it. So that's why it's a, it's a working measure. It's kind of work in progress. WIP is what uh, how uh, how uh, Matt Allington built it. So it's returning twelve. And all right. So you ready? It's going to be magical. What if I say three? Boom, right? So now we have something which is affecting, which is being selected by this. Right? So you see what's going on, like 3, 6, 12. Earlier, we can do anything. And now we can do, uh, we can keep going with this. So now what I'll say is... Avi, uh, go in here. a question? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a measure you created, huh? Yes, that's right. I created yeah, a measure. Yeah, great. great. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Looks great. Here. We're on the right path. Oh, okay. I, I, I feel so, yeah, I feel I feel the force. All right, so, but now I'm gonna say a simple uh, switch, if I can spell it right. Switch, and uh, switch is a, a more elegant way to use if then else, nested if then else's. So uh, I'm gonna say switch, and which is, again, I, I think of this as if then, if then. So if selected rolling period is three, then, ooh, I already have, that measure. Oh shoot! You know, actually, let me do it this way. And I realized that I'm not, I'm not doing it the right way. Uh, and we'll come back and fix it. Uh, average uh, uh, six months, and uh, twelve is uh, average twelve months. This is, this is gonna work, but um, <laughs> I, I can't believe I did this. Uh, okay, cool. So switch looks like it's good. And now, uh, okay, cool. Let me format it like dollars or something. Currency, currency general, and oh, okay, let's see. All right, cool. So let's. It's time for test. So, uh, uh, go away, my friend. So, uh, please go away. So this five ninety fun number we had already validated. So let's go back to Excel really quick, and uh, yeah. So it's five ninety one for January. We know that that is that is right. We kind of calculated it. 
by hand in Excel. So we know that's right. Let's just try six months. So if we do six months, what is that number? So again, I would come in Excel and I would say sum for our here one two three four five six uh, divided by six and that one six one eight two 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 so six one eight two 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 so yeah it's right I mean frankly <laughs> for this one I would kind of trust it but initially when I was starting out or if I'm writing a more complex measure I would always always double check and and yeah I mean for complicated measures, I would like find like one customer, like really small case, and I test it. And uh, I'm not going to test three. We're going to assume that works. So three, six, twelve. But I, I, I made a mistake because I didn't want to write it this way because this is still hard coding. If somebody asked for nine months, I would have to go back here, create a measure, and all that. So we didn't need any of that. <laughs> I, I feel pretty pretty silly right now because what we needed to do was this go in here and none of that switch business who cares about that so actually there are valid scenarios where you would need a switch just not right now because we don't need to because we can just do this notice notice where I'm going with this like this minus 12 that's the only thing I changed when I wrote three months six months 12 months and now I have a variable for that so we say selected, oops, selected rolling period, selected rolling period. Yep. So whatever that's coming in, it's coming in three, six, 12. You can do that and say selected rolling period. And, and that's it. And oh boy, we're going to have a lot more fun with this. So, uh, uh, so five, one, two, three, uh, Okay, something, what happened there? I don't know why it changed. Selected rolling period. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it was it was a minus here. <laughs> I was uh, I was getting really nervous for a second because the number didn't seem to match. 591588, so we know that 591588, that's uh, 12 months, this one is six months. Let's just check six months again. Uh, the 61822, 61822. So it's it's all working, and our measure is a lot more elegant. And now, of course, you can you can go to town with this. So here's what you can do. So Majid, uh, what what do you think about this so far? Do you, does it does it kind of seem like this? Yeah, really work? great. Awesome. Could, yeah, great. Awesome. And 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 you would have no trouble adding a 30. So tell me if you wanted to add an option for 13 rolling months what would you change good good question because i'm sure others may have the same one so uh, i'll use you as a guinea pig what would you well, change the, the rolling period table yeah. adding row there awesome all right i wasn't like i wasn't sure i, like, I didn't want to like you know um uh, it kind of trick you into something or so yep yeah it's 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 so easy oh gosh so let's just go in there and uh, so this rolling period and Oh, I feel I feel I'm in a really happy place right now because, it, and again, guys, I was talking about what I have to learn and relearn, and I love that process. But what I also like is that I live that excitement again because sometimes I get jaded where I've been seeing this system for so long. I'm like, yeah, sure, you can do this, but then I see it with somebody else's eyes. I'm like, ah, oh, this is awesome. So we add 13 over here, and and that's it. And in fact, what I would say is you can go to town with this. And I would add one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, up to whatever you want, right? So, and and I'll I'll show you where I'm going with this. So I'll add all of them. And again, the idea is that I'm able to serve not just myself but those uh, hundreds of users out there using this report. So I would I would back my a table and and then I'll I'll show you what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do here is that somebody may need all those values or different values. I don't want to predict. I don't want to be in the j job of predicting like what my user is going to use. So I'm going to give them like a wide wide choice, but in here I can come in here and say select filters and oh did that work? Seriously, okay. Well, my plan was to 
was to only have a 3, 6, and 12 show, but I didn't realize that you can't do visual level filters here. I'll think about that. Anyway, so yeah, adding something is as easy as that. 13, let's just double check this one for one last time, which is, let's add, so this is 12 months, this is six months, let's add 13. Oh, uh, let's try actually February because I'm not sure if you'll have 13 months. So this and 11, 12, 13 by 13. That's five. It actually January is valid, I think. Let's just try that. Yep, January is valid. So five eight two four nine six five eight two four nine six. Bingo. All right, Majid, thank you so much for walking on this journey. I loved. Uh, yeah. I loved kind of exploring this with you. You too. Awesome. Thank you. Great. So, so of course, if you want to get the file that's on there, just go to talkpowerbi.com. And once you're in, uh, the files link are, are there. It's going to have this file and it's going to have uh, uh, everything else we've ever done <laughs> on Talk Power BI. Uh, just to show you what it looks like. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping this file would be like there right now, although sometimes it takes some time to sync. So, my friends, I was talking about seeing things with new eyes, new eyes. Uh, there we go. So this is, you know, this is a few seconds ago. Yeah. So apparently there's a word for it. <laughs> and and it was taught to me by, uh, gosh, a very smart gentleman at Microsoft. So you've probably heard of uh, Deja Vu. Deja Vu. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain it. If you you'd have heard it, you know, uh, it's a cool word. But this word is Vujade. Huja day, if I'm getting right, let's see. So it's seeing the same thing, but with different eyes. And and I think I love the word first of all. So I'm an immigrant. I came from India, so I kind of have this kind of love hate thing. Well, mostly love now, of these words. I'm like, wow, that's so awesome. And uh, yeah, so it's and it's so powerful. So and I don't know. I mean, so. What I was talking about that when I see it with your eyes, I re-experience the wonder that is Power BI. I also am reminded of the pain and the struggle and the frustration that I would have to deal with doing things that like I was uh, the the spaghetti of formulas like this, endless formulas. Oh my gosh, that I would build, and how I felt when I realized that I didn't need to do that, that I could just define it once, use it everywhere. And that's, that's so So remember, I want to remind you of how Majid had asked his question. He had said, uh, rolling period matrices. But of course, if you realize now that you can take this stuff and just go to town, I mean, you know, you can, you can take that stuff and, um, you know, just, uh, uh, just uh, let's go with this. Let's do a bar chart. Like any any way imaginable, you can just kind of reuse it and drill down and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty magical. So so you guys help me experience that vuja there, where I see the same thing that I see day to day, and sometimes get bored and jaded. But when I'm with you guys, I see it with new eyes, and uh, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Cool. Uh, all right, so <laughs> I, I try to I try to end things on a high note. Sometimes I've had these things dragged too on because I'm loving it so much. I'm like, oh guys, give me more, give me more. But then it becomes really awkward. So let's do a last call, and uh, I see uh, Alan on the call as well. So Alan, uh, would love to check in with you if you have any question on the phone. Manuel, Steve, and again, Steve, big thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, it just my helped pleasure. in a big way. And let's do a last call on on that. Okay, I don't, I don't see anything new on here. So all right, my friends, we'll call it a day. And I'll see you next time, next week. Oh, so next Friday is, uh, is, is I'm excited about that. That one is a panel event. And and yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to not talking, although I might jump in when I get excited because I do feel really passionately about this. But uh, we do have one guest confirmed, and he's from the community, so I'm excited about that. Kirtpani, actually, let me let me bring him up. And uh, he is, uh, where is he? So again, he had just uh, reached out to me, responded to one of my emails, uh, and and we connected. So so yeah, that's Kirtpani. We're gonna have him here. He's close by, 
uh, in Washington. I'm based in Seattle, Washington. That's just a coincidence. And he's not really that close. It's, he's like a long drive. Um, but I've met him at Summit as well. Uh, so yeah, so and and we're gonna have we're we're trying to look for other other guests as well. So we might reach out to you. And again, if you if you folks join the Insiders Club, we'll we'll see. I always approach new things as, as an experiment, but we might be going to you for help on deciding future topics. We might ask you what you want to learn, and of course, if you need uh, you know involvement from you in other things, we might do that. All right, friends. Until next time, power on. Exactly.